Oh, oh crap. So today we're gonna do a quick review on a Nissan Leaf used cell battery pack. So what Big Battery does, or Tech Direct, but they wanna be called Big Battery now, and they sent it out so I could do this review, is that they're putting used cells into a pack with its own BMS and a metal case, and you can use it for solar. But as you guys know, with the Nissan Leaf, they had heat management issues. So the capacity of these cells is usually really bad. And they capacity test these cells, but they are only 65% of the original capacity. So even though this is a 2.8 kilowatt hour pack, and it's NMC, it's a cobalt based chemistry, it's 71 pounds. So this is very heavy because it is so degraded. So here are the Nissan Leaf cells and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven cells in series. And what's interesting about this pack design is that you have a threaded rod through every single cell and then you can tighten it down right here. So this box is made for these cells. And all of the cells are connected to this PCB board and it looks like we have a balance cable, but there's a lot of wires on here considering how many cells we have in series. So we need to open it up further. So there's a circuit breaker. And there we go. So we have 55 volts. Oh, there's an Anderson power pull over here. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Oh, this is cool, guys. Check this out. This is a very simple design. We have a BMS, a very high quality circuit breaker, and an Anderson power pull. And then state of charge indicators over here. And then we have a beeper. So this connects to the BMS. And this BMS is rated for 60 amps of continuous charge discharge current. And this is a common port. Something I don't like about this design is look at these red wires. These do not have enough current carrying ability to trip this circuit breaker. So these should have like their own individual fuse, but just something to notice. And I just realized that on the front of this battery, it says the maximum current is 40 amps. So they derated this system and put a 60 amp BMS, which is very smart. But something I can't find is a temperature sensor for the cells. So maybe it's on the other side. So I don't see a temperature sensor on this side at all. So I doubt that it has low temperature cutoff. And it also comes with an Anderson power pole so you can connect it to an inverter or even a solar charge controller. Now I have some copper lugs for the Anderson power pole and a 48 volt inverter. So we're gonna hook this up. How cool is that? It actually works. So this battery can discharge 40 amps and it's a 48 volt battery. So that means it can continuously run a 1920 watt load. Well, we have a 1500 watt heat gun and with inverter losses, this is like 16 to 1700 watts. So this is a good test. And we're only pulling 29 amps. So this should be easy for it. If it cuts off with this load, then we know that there's a problem. Now we're pulling 42 amps. Oh, it just turned off, no way. So the closest I can get is 36 amps and it's running it nicely. What? Did it turn off again? I just realized the inverter cut out because this one cannot handle that many amps. Dang it. So it wasn't the battery, it was the inverter. So that's great. Yeah, this inverter can only handle 1600 watts. I was actually putting 2000 watts through it, so that's pretty incredible that this inverter lasted that long. That was like a good solid minute or so. That's really amazing. All right, it passed the load test. I'm pretty happy. Now we're in the solar shed and we are testing out the battery with 810 watts of solar. And right now we're pulling 711 watts. Now we've triggered the over voltage protection, so this battery is fully charged and we can finally do our capacity test. And it says we have 57 volts on this meter and we're gonna increase the amperage very slowly. And we're gonna use my capacity tester and a jackery to power it out here because my main system is actually down. God damn it. So for this test, we're gonna pull around 800 watts or 13 amps at 56 volts and see what capacity we get in a few hours. The final capacity reading is 1,962. So I just figured something out, guys. We got 1.9 kilowatt hours from our capacity test, and on the sticker on that battery, it says 2.8 kilowatt hours. If you divide those two numbers, you get 0.67. So that means we got 67% of the rated capacity. If you go on the website, 
it says that these cells can push 65% of their original capacity. So that sticker on that battery, I'm pretty sure is referring to the original capacity and not the present usable. And this reduced capacity leads me to the big question of how long will these battery cells last for? Because there is lots of data on degradation of nickel manganese cobalt oxide, which this battery cell is using, but it doesn't tell me what the degradation is like after 60% of the rated capacity. Typically on those curves, it's very extreme for the first couple thousand cycles, and then it mellows out and then it's considered a second life storage battery, and then people cycle it at low C rates, and then reduce the charge and discharge bandwidth to milk as much power as they can out of that battery. And it is possible to safely do it, and there is a large community called the DIY Powerwall community that does it. And people do use Nissan Leaf cells for their battery system but I do not have any data to know how long these batteries will last for. So this is more of a DIY kind of battery. Lithium iron phosphate is much more stable and even after like this many cycles or even at that much degradation, you should expect to use it for a very long time. NMC is slightly different and the degradation is more severe. And the next point is because these are at reduced capacity, that means the specific energy is pretty bad. And I calculated with our capacity test, 59 watt hours per kilogram. So that means lithium titanate and lithium iron phosphate are actually less weight than these batteries. These are very heavy. That includes the case though in the BMS. So I'm not sure what the actual cells weigh, but it's pretty darn heavy for a battery pack. That's pretty substantial. The next downside is that these cells are a cobalt-based lithium ion chemistry. And what that means is that you can actually have a self-propagating thermal runaway effect that can catch everything on fire. And even if one cell were to go into thermal runaway, it would spread to the cells around it. And the temperatures that it can create can combust materials around it. So it's dangerous, right? And this is typically not a problem in a new UL listed device, such as a Tesla Powerwall, because all the cells are matched and you have a good enclosure and the BMS system is perfect. But for a used mismatched system that's coming from something that's already been cycled heavily and it's a second life storage battery, I would not trust that in my home. I would not trust it in my RV or any kind of mobile system or even close to where I'm sleeping. I would put it in a metal box outside. I would protect it from the elements, but yeah, I would keep it far away from me if I were to use a cobalt-based used cells chemistry. And there's actually lots of people that are successfully using cobalt-based chemistries indoors to build power walls and they are the DIY power wall community. So they build batteries with used cells and they're actually pretty good at it and most of them work just fine. But some people have burned their houses down. Typically it's from people doing silly mistakes and they do not understand how batteries work. But for me making a YouTube channel telling people what they should and should not do and what's safe, I would not recommend most people mess with any cobalt based used cell ever. But because this battery is built with its own BMS and you could put it outside in a metal box, I think that that would be safe. And I think these communities are great because these used batteries are going to be plentiful soon. There's lots and lots of electric vehicles coming to the road right now and we are going to have lots of used battery cells available. So I think a lot of people with stationary solar storage and all of these new BMS systems that are coming out, people are just going to combine them. I mean, look at how many people are building with Tesla battery modules and they're not ideal, but they work and they're very, very cheap. Because they're so cheap, you can make a massive battery. I mean, think about how cheap these cells are. You can make something that's like 10 or 20 kilowatt hours in capacity, and then a thousand watt array would just trickle charge it so slowly. And then when you actually do use power from your battery, it, it would be at such a low C rate that the internal temperature of the cell would not increase that much and the degradation would not be that severe. So you could really slow down aging. Even though you have only 65% of its rated capacity, it's still something and you can still use it for solar. 
And that's like kind of the logic that a lot of these DIY power wall guys have. We have all of these cells going into the landfill or being recycled. Why not use them for that last little bit and just make a large stationary lithium battery? They're practically the same price as a Tesla battery module, but it comes with a BMS and a circuit breaker and a box, an enclosure, and it's well put together. So that's a huge plus. The fact that we have second life storage batteries with a dedicated BMS and all a person needs to do is buy it and then you have a positive and a negative and you're done is incredible. So that's really cool. Next, the BMS is derated properly. So it's a 60 amp BMS, but they only rate it for 40 amps, which is nice because the circuit breaker will actually trip before the BMS over current protection would, which is a very good design, especially for a used cell system. That means that the FETs in that BMS will last a very long time. So these batteries have pros and cons as always, but for the price and what you get, it's pretty impressive. If somebody wants a lithium battery but just can't afford it and wants to make it work, this is a great little setup. It has all the safety protection features that you need, minus the low temperature charging, at least from what I can tell. I want my viewers to understand what they're getting themselves into and that this battery is not for everyone but they're making it so easy that anybody can use it. So I hope this video educates you on what you need to realize when buying these packs and some of the missing numbers in the data for degradation. Anyways, lots of people are using them, so if you have a specific application that warrants its use, then go for it. Also, we have a used lithium iron phosphate BYD battery pack. I already have it hooked up and it works really well. I have to finish this video, but yeah, it's coming up in the next couple days. I think you guys will love it. And yeah, I hope you guys like this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.